What it means to me to be a woman in sports is someone that is leading the way for the younger uh, female athletes that are coming through, um, a role model for a, a young woman that wants to do everything, wants to be the best she can be, be a, if it's an All-American, if it's a, an Olympian, uh, a professional athlete, um, raise a family, get married, be a grandmother. I've been just very, very fortunate to be able to do every one of those things. And uh, I think that's something that, that young women can look up to and know that it can be done. You don't have to put things aside. You can do it all. My brother was a, an athlete, so you kind of follow in your, your siblings' footsteps. So I wanted to be an athlete like my brother. And then I realized that it was really fun and I was good at something and, and uh, I played basketball, I ran track, I played tennis, I was a cheerleader, I was on the dance team, uh, oh and I played volleyball. <laughs> and so, you know, that that's, was the most fun and I think uh, anybody, anybody should just do everything and, and then you'll find your niche. As a female in sports, I think in order to be a good role model, first of all, I need to be myself and uh, not try to be somebody I'm not, which, which sometimes as a female, you try to be who you think you should be. And um, as an athlete, you know, if you're female, you're, you're girly, you should be girly, it's okay, I'm very girly. Uh, and, and I was able to get everything accomplished. But I, I think the big thing is be who you are and don't change who you are. The female that is, has given me the most influence uh, to date, I would have to say Wilma Rudolph. Um, I've always looked up to her. She was an underdog to no end. She, you know, she had all kinds of problems with, with her uh, polio and um, her, her mom didn't give up on her. She didn't give up on herself and she ended up being a huge role model for someone like me and she probably had no idea that she was going to do that to people. So I, I would want to be that person. The advice I'd give to someone just starting out in sports is to really focus on um, their health and well-being, meaning their mental health first and their physical health. Uh, also, if they're a student, the, their academics, and take it one step at a time because it's a long journey. You know, I played till I was 40, so you know, you can you can play for a long time, so don't rush things. Just just take it one day at a time. I think the biggest barrier for women in sports would be budgetary, um, because most women sports do not get as much money as the men sports. And so we have to watch our budget a lot more than uh, say a football or, or a men's basketball program or, or baseball, something like that. You know, we, um, we have to kind of pinch our pennies and find ways to make the athlete feel that they're equal. And um, I, I would have to say that's the biggest thing because, you know, I'd love to get my, my kids, and I'm sure I speak for a lot of other uh, women uh, sports coaches, you'd love to get your kids a lot of things that other sports have, but you just don't have the money to do it. Title IX, <laughs> I feel, still has a lot of work to do on probably every campus in America. I could be wrong. That's, that's a personal statement. It could be, I could be way off base, but uh, as I said earlier, 
budgetary women in sports and are not there. Um, facilities wise, I just think there's a lot more that needs to be done for women in sports to, to feel equal because we don't. In my perfect world, I think Title IX should play a bigger role in having equal access to um, ways for the other for athletes, female athletes, to make as much money as the male athletes. I I I don't think that we're there yet, and Title IX needs to work on helping the female athlete more.